me so hard, get overwhelmed. Oh, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Lead me to the rock. Oh, lead me to the rock. Oh, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. so hard is over well please take me higher than I higher than I higher than I oh Savior lead me to the rock oh lead me to the rock Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Oh, Father, lead us to the rock. Oh, lead us to the rock. Oh, lead us to the rock that's higher than I. Is when I hurt, I'm overwhelmed. Lord, lead us to the rock that's higher than I. To the rock, oh, lead me to the rock, oh, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. That's higher than I, higher than I, higher than I. Take me by my hand and lead me to the rock. Oh, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock. Take my hand and lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock. Oh, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lead me to the rock. Oh, lead me to the rock. Oh, lead me to the rock. Yes, lead me to the rock. Oh, lead me to the rock. Take my hand and lead me. Oh, 
take my hand and lead me. I want to go, want to go, want to go, want to go to the place that's higher than I. Want to go, want to go, want to go, want to go. That's higher, higher than I. Somebody bless his name. Somebody bless his name. Jesus. Bless his name. may be seated in his presence. Never heard that song before. The Lord just wrote that song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if you've ever heard, Stephen Heard does it. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, Father, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock. It's higher than I, oh Lord. When my heart is overwhelmed, I pray that you would lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock Higher than I Oh Lord That's higher than I Thank you Jesus God is something God is something The Lord is something in it it's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like His presence. Get your Bibles if you would. Uh, honor the Lord for His goodness and His mercy. Why don't we put our hands together for our bishop and our pastor? I heard you all. I heard you all had a powerful time this morning in the Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together for the man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in his presence. Before I get into this word it's a really a word that i'm that i'm that i'm re-wearing again something that the lord has already given me and i've i'm delivering it in portions and any any anybody that knows me knows that i would um i would rather preach than anything i mean i i, I love what i do because i love god's people but i'm not an anxious preacher and any time that I get an opportunity to just sit, I do. So when the Lord impress upon me to keep preaching, I know it's something that he's doing. And I don't want to miss this. Because he's not just doing it for you, he's doing it for me. He's doing it for me. I was telling somebody I'm not going to live out the scripture that says after I preach the gospel to others then I myself will become a castaway. I'm gonna make sure that with everything that's within me, I make it in. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. If you would uh, get your Bibles out, 
and um, get your Bibles out and um, want to deal with some things. You know, wrote things down. They may not be systematically in in order tonight, but I'm going as the Lord uh, gives it to me. Is that okay? Um, when the Lord began to give me this word on righteousness, and I thought that I was going to be ministering it, um, just want to say this as a side note, Sister Allison, I, I pray for you all the time. Pray for you all the time. I, um, the Christmas picture that you all sent us is on my counter. And for some reason, I just keep walking by there and picking up that picture, and picking up that picture. And my Lord's will and say the same. And um, that baby comes here. I want to be the godmother to your baby. That's only if it's healthy, because I, I don't want to be no godmother to no retarded child. <laughs> it's going to be healthy. Amen, somebody. Somebody asked me, can you be godmother to my baby? I said, I got to see it first. I got to see it first. I don't do well with all that, you know. Somebody looking at you a little, uh, 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 it's got to be a little cute or something. But I just keep praying for your baby. I just keep, I just keep praying for your baby. And I'm just, I'm just praying that the will of the Father be done, you know. And I'm just, I don't know why, but the Lord just laid it in my heart. And I just wanted to tell you that, so ushers y'all, you know, she ain't asking for no special treatment, but I'm asking y'all to, because apparently there's, there's just something that God wants to do with this baby. And I don't know what, what, what warfares or whatever you've been encountering, but, you know, we, we, I want the church to take her in prayer because I keep wearing you. I keep wearing you. I keep wearing you, I keep wearing it, I keep wearing it, I keep wearing it. So whenever I feel that, I know that God's trying to intercept the work of the enemy. Amen, somebody. Amen. I want you all to um, get your Bibles. And we're going to begin in the book of Ephesians. And I know that's going to be a familiar chapter to you. And I'm not going to try to be before you. A long time and if I don't finish tonight I just have to keep preaching it till I finish it is that all right when you look at the book of Ephesians the sixth chapter the book of Ephesians the sixth chapter and though the scripture is familiar to us though the scripture is familiar to us um, I wanted us to understand and I want to step back to a few things that I, that I pre-mentioned because I wanted to grab you. I wanted to grab you and I don't want you to forget it. Um, when you look at, and we talked about the wardrobe of the priest and we talked about the foundation of the garment of the priest entering into the divine presence of the Lord. And why has the Lord given us this whole uh, concept about understanding and knowing how to enter in his to his divine presence because if this is the year of divine release then you're going to have to learn how to walk in the divine nature of God the divine nature of God you're going to have to learn how to walk in that nature and walk in that spirit and I said that when you look at the whole garments and I know many of you will be getting the tapes uh, from this so I'll just move really quick with this that when you look at the garments of the high priest and we understood that the high priest and the priest both had to work together in the temple or else uh, everything would be null and void the priest could not do the work without the high priest and the high priest could not complete the task without the priest so that becomes the joining of the priest and the high priest together to maintain not only the work of the temple, but to get the job done, both naturally and spiritually so. In other words, the things that, 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 they, that they performed in the natural, and please hear everything that I'm saying, the things that they performed in the natural, 
were spiritual meanings. You know, if they, if they were required to, to, to keep the oil always filled uh, inside of the menorahs, and they were required to make sure that the bread was fresh every day, all of those were symbolic for what the Lord requires out of us as priests, that we keep the oil of the anointing flowing in our life and the word of the Lord fresh daily in our lives. And because of this, now because of this, the high priest's job was to go inside and behind the veil once a year for the atonement of the people. And he was to go in carrying the blood sacrifice of a lamb so that the sins and sicknesses and diseases of the people could be forgiven and washed away. That's how they got their deliverance. But if there was no proper maintaining of the tabernacle, the priest was not in the, in the right position to go into that most holy place. Now, what gave him permission to go into that most holy place is because all the things that I named now, the turban in which I went through those before, the turban, the tunic, the trousers, the belt, the robe, the ephah, the waistband, the breast piece, the urim, and the thuman. All of these particular items, all nine pieces of this uh, major part of the items, which were also um, the shoulder plates, which had the tribes listed one way, and, 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 and all of the facets, the ropes, how many rings went through the rope, everything was symbolic to the fact that all of these things had to be in place. They had to be in place operating in the life of the high priest on a daily basis, every day, so that when that time of year came, I hear this, when that time of year came, where it was his time to go into the most holy place. He would be permitted to go to that place without death and come back with an answer for the people without hindrances because he kept the wardrobe all year because the Holy Spirit did not live in him because it had not come. Okay. So then he had to be disciplined to wear what God told him to wear. He had to do the works, listen at this, in order to qualify him to be able to go in to the most holy place. Now, when he got ready to go into the most holy place, he stripped all of that off except for the robe of righteousness and the trousers and the waistband. Because the white robe represented righteousness and the waistband was the belt of truth. Okay. Watch this. It was the belt of truth. So without righteousness and truth being matched and together, then there is no deliverance for the people. There is no God talking. Okay. Let me take you to something. Let me take you to something. Hold your finger in Ephesians because I'm flipping, flipping my, my paper over. Go to Psalms 85 and 10. I want to show you something right quick. Keep your finger in, uh, in Ephesians and go to Psalms 85 and 10. Y'all going to let me teach you tonight because I know you. Let me teach you tonight. 85 and 10. And mark this. Um, mark this in your Bible. It says uh, 9. I'm going to start at 9 verse. Surely his salvation is near to those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. And is ready to be appropriated. Say appropriated. appropriated. Say appropriated put in place, gone into operation. The salvation of the Lord is ready to be appropriated. Appropriated. It says here, surely his salvation is near to those who reverently, worshipfully, worshipfully fear him. What does worshipfully fear him mean? And I have to break this down. Worshipfully fear him. When the woman came to the well and she met Jesus at the well and Jesus began to deal with all of her issues with men, and he began to talk about, you know, she, he asked her for water. And she began to say, you have nothing to draw with. Vice versa. And you heard me say the other night. And, and she also didn't have anything to draw with. When she got through with that whole transition and the water at the well and all of that and the husbands, she said to him, where uh, uh, will, will Jerusalem worship? Where will worship become? And so Jesus began to say to her that they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Because what he was trying to say to her is that the rituals that was once practiced 
from the Jewish and from Israel would no longer be what is needed. In other words, you won't worship because you dress a certain way. You won't worship because that won't be worship because you sing the right song or because you wear a certain garment. You don't hear what I'm saying? It would be worship when you get honest before me because worship, oh, you don't hear that. Worship is being honest with God. Worship is being taught the truth, exposed to the truth, and walking the truth. So you don't do worship service when you get here. The reason why worship service sometimes doesn't carry the same anointing as it does every Sunday because you got people singing a song but they're not honest. What makes the glory of God fall in worship is why you worship and you say, God, I know I stink. I'm not nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm just filthy before you today. And as righteous as I think I am, your word says that my righteousness still is like a filthy rag. So I stand before you and I honor you as my God. And you got every right to slay me and kill me. And you know what, God? I know that everything in my life is not purified the way you want it. But I humble myself today. And I call you the God of my life. And I say to you, complete your work. I say to you today, you're the Lord of Lords. You're the King of Kings. You're the God that never stops. The work that you started in me, you will complete that work. And so I glorify you because you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask of thee. I praise you. When that happens, the power of God drops in the building. Because he embraces truth. He don't want our glory, God. I just praise you, Lord. Ooh, I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you. No, 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 no. That's not worship. Worship is God, I'm a liar. God, I got problems. Lord, I got issues. But today, I'm going to name your names. I'm going to say that you're Jehovah Jireh. You're the banner that watches over me. You're Jehovah Nisi. God, you're my provider. God, you're Jehovah Shishik. You're my righteousness. Because when I denounce myself and be honest and I exalt his name, that's worship. God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Does that make a lot of sense? That make a, see, that's the reason why if the, if, the, if the organist gets sick with the flu, it doesn't hit the worship service. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And the praising leader don't never say, come on, everybody, worship him. It doesn't stop my worship. As a matter of fact, the praise and worship leaders ought to be saying, slow down, because you know what y'all done took off without us. As a matter, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, before they sing the first song, the rumble ought to already be in the atmosphere. Where they become intimidated because they don't know where to take you because you're already there. In other words, I worship God when I say no to the devil. Worship means I reverently fear him. Which means when I'm not in this sanctuary and the devil confronts me with something that I know that is evil and I tell him no, I just worship God. I just denounced the enemy and exalted my Savior. Y'all ain't saying that. Lord have mercy. That's it, ain't it, Dickie? That's it. That's worship. When the power becomes no to the devil. I just worshiped him in the grocery store. When the devil said, take that extra 20. And don't tell the lady that she made a mistake. When I said, ma'am, here's the 20. You made a mistake. I just worship him. So when I get here and they start singing, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, I know what I'm singing about. Then the song becomes my witness. It is not my worship. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm praising God because of the song because it is my witness. It is my confirmation. So when you start singing, I exalt you. I exalt thee. No, that's that. that becomes your witness because I exalted him in the grocery store. I exalted him when I could have fell in the fornication. I exalted him when I could have told a lie, when I could have cheated on my exam. I exalted him. Now I come to witness. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus. Ah, does anybody get anything right there? Anybody get anything right there? That's what worship service is. Worship service ain't. We come to sing of it and give him glory. That's a song. That ain't worship. Because if you haven't lived nothing, you're not a worshiper. You a praiser. And anybody can praise. He said that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. But they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Touch your neighbor and say, are you a true worshiper? Woo. I don't want to go. I don't want to get stuck there. I don't want to get stuck there. Because that right there can mess a lot of people up. Oh, Jesus have mercy. Let's read what the word said. Let's read what he said right here. Let's read what he said right here. 85, 85 and 9. Surely his salvation is near to those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. And is ready to be appropriated. That the manifest presence of God. His glory, look, 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 look at that, may tabernacle. No, no, no. His glory may tabernacle and abide in our land. That the glory of God may tabernacle. Okay, let me just say it again because I don't think y'all understand what I'm saying. That the glory of the Lord may tabernacle meaning the glory of god in my life will tabernacle will possess a priest a high priest a menorah a lampstand the bread the blood the worship the brokenness the cleanliness everything that exists in the tabernacle in the old testament may be made manifest in me when you start talking about God, get the glory out of my life. I can't get it until I'm tabernacled in you. That's why the Bible says, ye are the temple now. Oh, y'all, come on. It ain't this building right here. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Where is your anointing? Where is your oil? Where is your bread? Where is the word of God in you? Where is the oil of the anointing? Where is your worship? Where is your altar of incense? Where is your brokenness? Am I helping somebody? Because if that's not happening to you, you're just a church goer. God is not being tabernacled in you. Which means the only way. Okay, I'm going to say this one more time. I'm going to say this one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. Let me just calm myself down. The only way that his glory, he showed forth his glory. Watch the word. He showed forth his glory. Uh, Moses saw him in a um, burning bush. Let me just say that. Um, Moses went to Pharaoh. And, uh, you know, the Red Sea was parted. Uh, Moses' snake ate up their snake. You know, all the people said that, was, that wasn't the glory of God. That was the works of God against the hand of Satan. That was, that was God operating in, a del in deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. Deliverance is power over the enemy. That's what that was. You don't read where the glory of God, the Bible said, and a fire came from heaven. When he got through giving Moses the measurements of a tabernacle and said, now build this altar and build me this ark. The Bible said, and they all stood back and a fire came from heaven and hit the altar and stayed lit for over 2,000 years. Y'all ain't hearing me. Which means everywhere they went, they had to pick, listen, listen. Everywhere they went, they had to take that fire and shovel it out from under that altar. Put it in a special container and take it across the country lit. Because God said that the fire was to never go out. Okay, you ain't hearing this. I don't think y'all hear this. That means we shouldn't lose it from the church to the house. That means we shouldn't have to jumpstart you all over again next Sunday. Because the kind of fire that you now possess is fire that's capable of traveling and not losing its flame. Because God lit it. It ain't man lit. It ain't lit by the song. It's not lit because I got my favorite preacher. It's lit because God lit it in my spirit. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. They ain't got to sing my favorite song. They don't have to preach my favorite message. God lit the fire. Sit down, sit down, because y'all don't have that. Y'all don't have that. Y'all don't have 
your car. You ain't got nothing on. You just riding out. I almost said, hold up, old shot. Lord, where that come from? It's a traveling tabernacle. You a moving temple. Come on here, church. The priesthood is in you. The high priest is operating in you. Oh, y'all sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I'm going to be careful. You going from Tuesday to Sunday, and all of a sudden you come all dry. But what's wrong with your prayer? Well, 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 I don't know. I don't know what happened. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that's really, really powerful. Let me tell you something that's really, really powerful. Then if, if, if your fire go out that quick, then you got a flame of a Bihu. It's, 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 it's strange fire. And that's why God cursed them. Because it was a fire that he didn't light. Okay, come on, come on. Y'all, 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 y'all looking at me like, oh, Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. His glory may tabernacle and abide in our land. Here we go. Mercy and loving kindness and truth. Have met together. Okay. Mercy, loving kindness, and truth met together. Let me just tell you how that went. Um, there was a meeting call. Truth came and said, That's a stinking, fornicating, lying, cheating. No good, somebody right there. And according to the truth, they ought to die. And the truth, watch this, the truth stood and will always stand and will hate. Okay, Lord Jesus. The reason why people don't live right because they don't hate sin. Because the truth is a spirit. God, I wish I could teach that all by myself. Truth is a spirit. It's a spirit, baby. It's a spirit. It really is. And, and truth will always, watch this, truth will always go for the assassination of anything that comes against God. Okay, we just... And so truth said, kill her! And then mercy says, give her another chance. And then loving kindness says, I'm going to go to the cross for the sin. I'm going to become the sacrificial lamb. Because according to truth, we all should be dead. According to truth, none of us should be in this place right now. Oh, y'all, God, hey, 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 hey. If God just would have released the spirit of truth by itself, we all would die. But he said truth and loving kindness and mercy had a meaning. Come on, come on, come on. And they decided, they decided no death for this person. Because if mercy and loving kindness and truth have met together, then the next part said righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on. Which means you can demand the peace of God. Because truth said you should die. Mercy said give him another chance. Love and kindness said I'll die for him. And if I'm going to die for you, you better receive this plan of righteousness. Because righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Which means when the enemy comes in with confusion, it cannot stay. That's when the devil comes with all of his lies and, and trying to confuse your mind and, and trying to get you all out of sorts. You can rebuke it. That's why you got power to tell him he's a liar. That's why you can tell the devil to shut your mouth. That's why you can tell him, get out of my mind. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus because I am the righteous. Peace and righteousness kissed each other. They're intimate. There's a bond there. I'm not saved and confused. I'm not the righteous and still going through pain. I'm not hearing y'all saying that. I'm not 
the righteous and don't have power to rebuke the enemy. Wherever there's confusion and strife, I've been given power to rebuke him. Because you know why? I can command peace to come forth now, not tomorrow. Okay, y'all sit down. I'm, 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 I'm going ahead of myself. I'm going ahead of myself. I'm going ahead of myself right here. Because, see, they'll tell you all day long. Now, I don't know where y'all come from. But when I, was, when I was growing up, you know, as a teenager, they say, they say, uh, they said, uh, uh, he like you. And I said, no, he don't. He said, yes, he do. He said, he want to be your boyfriend. So then I said, you see, he sent me a little, no, you want me and my, my girlfriend? I said, check the box, so you check the box. Then my sister, she used to always tell us this. My sister said, yeah, I don't care who you want to be for. Now, if you ain't ready to really be their boyfriend, and you, you, you want to kind of like just play him because he going to buy you candy and stuff like that, don't kiss him. <laughs> said, because if you kiss in the mouth, it creates a bond. And then your emotions get in it. And though you don't like him no more, it wakes up and stimulate the emotional side of you, even the good sense of you that's saying he ugly. Your good sense is saying he got cavities right in the front of his mouth. But because you done kissed him, there's an emotional tie there. Okay, I'm not getting nobody to go with me. I'm not getting nobody to go with me. And see what God looked at and saw that you know what our situations was going to be nasty. So he said in order to guarantee that we would be locked into the kingdom and the devil could never snatch us out. I'm going to let righteousness and peace kiss each other. Which means no matter what happens from this point on there's a bond. Okay y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all don't want to have no church tonight. Y'all don't want to go with this tonight. There's a bond forever. There's a bond forever. And though the enemy will come, he cannot tarry. He cannot stay. Though he shows his head, he knows he only got a certain amount of time. Because as long as I sit there and cry, I'm preaching to my own self, so y'all just forgive me. As long as I sit there and cry and be pitiful and start going through changes about it, then you know what? He can remain. But the minute I say, I'm the righteous, all I have to do is say, I'm the righteous. The minute I say, I'm the righteous, then four other people show up. Love and kindness, mercy. Peace and truth. You don't hear me. You didn't just hear what I said. When I declare that I'm the righteous, truth shows up. Which means when truth shows up, watch this, and I am the righteous, then truth doesn't come to kill me. Truth comes to kill what is against me. And so when I begin to praise God because I'm the righteous, then everything that's a lie is exposed. Because the truth will come and tell me what the, oh, the truth will say, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. Don't believe that. Go ahead and shout anyhow. Go ahead and speak in tongues. You can take a lap around this church. Keep on praising God. Because what just happened is a lie. What the devil just said is a lie. Because you know what? The minute you said I'm the righteous, truth has a responsibility to expose every lie. going out there y'all and y'all and y'all let me I'm going out there y'all y'all go to Psalms 143 I'm gonna show you something anybody getting anything out of this tonight anybody know God gave me this how many know God gave me this in prayer how many know I ain't read this nowhere and I ain't listened to nobody's tapes and I ain't copied this he birthed this in my spirit let me do just, let me just show, you, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. Psalms, Psalms 143 and 11 says, uh, you with me? You got it? Say yes. It says, save my life, O Lord, for your name's sake. In your righteousness, bring my life out of trouble and free me from distress. And in your mercy and loving kindness, there it is again, there it is again, there it is again. That is again. Y'all, you didn't see what I just saw. 
You couldn't have saw what I just saw. You couldn't have saw that. Cause, 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 cause if you would have said that, you would have, you would have, you would have had some real association. You would have had some intellectual association to what he just said. Then you don't cry. You don't cry, save me, Lord. No, 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 no. Save me in your righteousness, cause that's how you save. Okay, y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Because you know why you don't get that? Because that's why a lot of people ain't saved. Because they never said, save me, God, in your righteousness. Okay, okay. See, because righteousness and holiness is two different things. Holiness is the state of being. It already is perfect. It already is without blemish and without stain. Listen, holiness is the benchmark. Righteousness is the walk that you walk out to get to holiness. So when he cried, be ye holy, that means he's calling you to walk a walk of righteousness. So save me in your righteousness. What do you mean by righteousness? Save me, save me in the right stuff. Save me by what I do right. Okay. Save me with the right way. Okay, y'all gonna make me Y'all gonna make me just, y'all gonna, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Go to 1 John and hold yourself there. Put your finger there. Go to 1 John 2 and stay, and, and come, come on back here. Just write that down, 1 John 2, and then flip back with me. Ooh, we. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch it. Watch it. Okay, 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 okay. Man, we get, we went, we we get, we went moving something really powerful right now. Cause, cause see, I went all the way down to eleven, and then, I, then the Holy Ghost just showed me something right there, Deacon, in the first verse. So let me read it to you. Okay. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. I'm doing a lot of crying now. In your faithfulness. Answer me how, church, and in your righteousness. When I, when I say, help me, Lord, then I'm not asking you to help get me out of pain. I'm asking you to help me to do what's right. Y'all are mad at me tonight. Y'all mad at me because y'all ain't saying that. He says, and enter not into judgment with your servant. Don't judge me. Don't kill me. For in your sight no man living is in himself righteous or justified. For the enemy has pursued and persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in dark places as those who have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed and faints within me, wrapped in gloom. My heart within my bosom grows numb. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all of your doings. I ponder the work of your hands. I spread forth my hands to you. My soul thirsts after you like a thirsty land for water. See, I pause and calmly think about it. Answer me speedily, O oh Lord, for my spirit fails. Hide not your face from me lest I become like those who go down into the pit, the grave. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. For you, for on you do I lean and in you do I trust. Mm, mm, mm. Cause me to know the way. Listen. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my inner self to you. Y'all ain't. I can't get no church right there. I can't get no church right there. I can't get, you know why? You know why? Because all that praying, all that help me, God. And, oh, my soul is, is burdened. I'm full of gloom. Oh, I feel like I'm in a dark pit. God, I'm really going through. But he got on down there and said the key word. Help me to know which way I should walk in you. Help me to walk in righteousness. Because you know what? He knows I'm in pain. You done already told him. You hurt. You despondent. The devil is persecuting you. He got his foot on your neck. You in a hole. Now he's trying to say to you that the only thing that's going to get you out is when you cry, God, help me to walk right. Some of y'all. Some of y'all don't believe that. Oh, okay, cause, cause y'all, y'all, is this too much? Is it too much? Okay, am I hollering too much or what? Cause y'all looking at me like, 
Like, Jesus. Cause, cause, I, cause I, that's how y'all looking at me like, like you want to hold on to the bench, like, ooh. you know, when, when you get ready to hit a child, they be like, ooh, Jesus. You, because, because, because he says, because he says, when I get through telling you everything that is emotionally wrong, now I got to render my inner self to you. Now, why does he say that? Why does he say that? Because the Bible says, I believe it's in the book of Matthew or Mark, that it's not what goes into the man that defiles the man, it's what's coming out of the man. It's what's coming out of the man that defiles the man. So if the devil got a yank on you like that, and he got you gloomy and underburdened and persecuted and got you thrown down and covered up and choked up and you can't hardly breathe, then what the Lord is trying to tell you, there's some stuff going on in you. And if you bring me your inner you, we can help that out of you. Because if you bring me your inner you, then nothing on the outside can hold on. Because I done already told you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So whatever's oppressing you from the outside has got to take his hands off when you submit your inside to me. When you give me your inner man and I purge it and I clean it and I put my divine nature on the inside of you. Every shackle that's on your life has got to drop to its feet. The devil got to take his hands off of your mind, your money, your family, your friends, and your body. You don't hear me. I wish I had a church in here that felt like praising God. It's an inner thing when you yield him the inner self. Y'all making me scared. Y'all act like I ain't preaching. I don't know. 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 You, 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 you. Hold on. 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 I'm going I'm 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 to quote this, and you can, you can get the tape or write it down, but don't turn your Bible from where I had you. Because, see, James, James 1 says, God, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about tonight. Hmm. James 1 and 19 says, understand this, my beloved brethren, let every man be quick to hear a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense and to get angry. For man's anger does not, does not promote the righteousness of God, wishes to require. Get mad about it. Don't promote the righteousness that God wishes to require. Ooh, Jesus, y'all ain't playing. He ain't playing. He ain't playing. He ain't playing with this one. This series right here. Mm -mm. This is a bullet right here. He says, so get rid of all of the uncleanliness and the rampant out, the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. Hear me? The rampant outgrowth. The rampant outgrowth. Get rid of the rampant outgrowth. We see a plant. But whatever we see made manifest came from the inside of the dirt. It doesn't grow from the top. So, okay, all right. Okay. You, you know, you know, let me just, 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 let me just help you with this right here. Because I got to make this plain. <clears throat> what he's saying is this. What he's saying right here. Okay. I think I see something loose in here. Now, if this flower is sitting on that leaf and um, that flower is an outgrowth because we see it. But we do understand that how that flower got there, it grew from somewhere. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to bring me your inner self. And while you're getting honest with me, I want you to cut the flower off as your sign 
that what's been growing in me, I don't want that manifestation seen in my life no more. That's why you put the cigarettes down and then he deliver you from the spirit of smoking. You move out and stop shacking and then he'll deliver you from lust. You don't hear me. But you got to get rid of the outgrowth. You don't hear me. Y'all don't want me to preach to y'all. Y'all don't want me to preach it. No, no, no. There come the time when you got to put it down. You got to take the first step. You got to say, I don't want it here. You got to put down all of your pornography magazines. You got to throw your videos out. You got to change the channel. You got to get rid of the outgrowth. I don't hear nobody shouting at me. The church done went quiet right there. Everybody went silent. I can't hear nobody holler back at me. And right there, somebody ought to be shouting and giving God some glory. You got to come out of it. You got to tell the devil no. You got to say, this is cut out of my life. Let's do it. Outgrowth of wickedness. Watch this. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit. In a humble, gentle, modest spirit. In a humble, gentle, modest spirit. Receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your soul. Did y'all? Okay, that's <laughs> If you get rid of the outgrowth and then let me plant another seed down in there. Okay, let me tell you, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something. See, I, I, I know a little bit of something about planting because, you know, I used to have a, you know, my, 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 my aunt came and planted some flowers outside of my house in New York. And so the flowers was going beautiful. And all of a sudden, they started acting like they dying. Something going wrong. She said, you know what? Something foul done got in your soil. So she went and got some food stuff and some fertilizer and she went and got some weed killer y'all ain't hearing me and she and she dug up she dug right next to the flowers that was dying she put some new flower seeds but then down the same hole she put some fertilizer and some weed killer around it first she put the new seed right next to the dying plant right next to the dying flowers. And then she dug another ring around that and put some, some, some fertilizer and some weed killer around that. Now, the old flowers went on ahead and died because the weeds had already killed them. But because she had planted a new seed, a new flower came up and because she put the weed killer down there, the same thing that killed the flower last time couldn't kill it this time. Because if you plant it right, it has the power to you got people trying to plant the word on you. They, don't, they, ain't, they ain't digging no weeds. They ain't putting no weed kill in there. You know, they're trying, to, they're trying to plant seeds on, oh, you're going to prosper. Honey, I see you blessed. Now put some weed killer down there, but you got to give up on occasion, baby. You got to come on out of sin right there. You got to give up lying and gossiping right there. You got to close your spirit to a bunch of mess. You got to get consecrated in God. Yeah, I'm going to prophesy that you're going to be blessed. I'm going to plant a seed that says that the Lord is going to prosper your way. But I also got to put a weed killer down in there. I got to put some fertilizer down in there. Or you're going to come up the same way you did before. Shouting with no power. Speaking in tongues and can't cast the devil out. Running around the church and backsliding every week. Is y'all is, is hearing this? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Stay right there in Psalms. Keep your, keep your paper. I'm going to keep my paper in Psalms 143, and then you go to 
Go to, go to, go to, go to First John, because I got to, I had sent you there. And I need you. Woo-hoo! Jesus. Dun, 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 dun. First John 2. And, um, mm, mm. Okay, here we go. 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 John, first John 229 says, Oh, God. If you know, y'all got it? Yeah. If you know, perceive, and are sure that he, Christ, is absolutely righteous, conforming to the Father's will in purpose, thought, and action. Okay, that's, 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 that right there is just, a, is just, is just enough to choke you to death. Okay, if you are absolutely sure that the Christ that you say that you have is righteous, the one that is in you, righteous in his ways, his perceptions, and actions, we to be the same thing. That's how you sure. I'm learning that. You know, he 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 been teaching me that in the last eight months, Ishmael. That um, you don't know you saved by, you know, I, I, I my coming church. I, I just feel like his power was all over me, but it didn't keep you. My proof that I have this thing is that it serves me like a chastity belt. I cannot do what I want to do. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. 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 Write this down, write this down. See, I keep telling you to write stuff down because I don't want you, I don't want you to lose it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna lose nothing he's saying to me tonight. Second Timothy 3.16. When I ask you what's my scripture when I get through reading this, don't let me forget that. If I like I'm getting ready to say amen, somebody raise a hand and say, you forgot. 2 Timothy 3, 16. Come on, let's, come on, let's read this, 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 1 John 2, 29. So, 1 John 2, 29. He said, if you know, perceive, and are sure that he, Christ, is absolutely righteous, conforming uh, it to the Father's will in purpose, thought, and action, you may also know, be sure, that everyone who does righteously and is therefore in like manner. You, did you hear that? Looking like him, acting like him, talking like him, living like him, in like manner, conformed to the divine will, is born, begotten of him, God, born of God. That's where that comes in, born again. Are you born again? Yeah, I'm born again. You cannot be born again. You do not have his like manner. Those that are born again, they conform to the divine will of the Father. They do his will every day. They strive for his will. They look like Christ. They sound like Christ. They move like Christ. They speak in tongues. They live what they sing about. They conform to God's will. That's how you know you're born again. DNA is different. You changed. You ain't got Uncle Boogie's uh, DNA. Oh, your old family may be alcoholics and drug addicts. You ain't got their DNA. You got born again. Now all of a sudden, you're the first one in your family to finish college when everybody else dropped out of his own drugs because you got born again. There's some things that will never happen in your life unless you get born again because your family DNA has already crossed you out as a nothing. You've already been declared that you'll never be nothing. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Based upon where some of y'all come from, you were never supposed to make it. You ain't never supposed to have nothing. You ain't never supposed to go nowhere. You're supposed to have 10 babies. By the time you're 25, you're not hearing what I'm saying. You're supposed to drop out of high school. But when I got born again, there's a that came upon me that says I shall not die but live to declare the works of God and not just in a miracle I walk in him and receive his divine nature you don't hear what I'm saying you'll be able to declare to the devil my father is rich in 
y'all sit down, y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down, because I, I don't want to go there like that. I don't want to go there no more. That's why some of y'all in here just need to lean on your neighbor and say, honey, I'm going to make it. Now, y'all ain't saying that right like you mean. You ain't saying like you mean it. Say, everything that was prophesied to me. Say, the reason why it was prophesied to me, because it wasn't in my family for me to become that. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Say, the reason why God had to prophesy to me, because it wasn't in my family for me to become that. It wasn't a part of my DNA for me to have that. But God had to speak it over me to let me know that something had changed. My bloodline had changed. My DNA had changed. I'm now a child of the king. I've been born again. That's why you ain't got a bed bar and plead. Because the Bible said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying to you. That's why you ought to tell the devil, shoot your best shot. I'm going to still make it. Do whatever you want to do. Because my testimony is like men of Christ. Come on, devil. Do what you must do quickly. That the glory. something that's going to hurt you. Sit down. I got to give you this. I got to get, because some of y'all ain't seen this before. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 See, I can stand on the word. I'm preaching to myself. Y'all ain't got to praise God with me. You ain't got to praise him with me. You ain't got to praise him with me. I can praise him by myself right now. me here. But I promise you, if one person done read this before, I'd be shocked in here. It says, let me read something to you. Stay right there. Stay right there. Matter of fact, keep your praise. Somebody break out and praise him right there, because I don't want the praise to drop right there. Okay, that's what I want. Because I'm going to confirm to you. I'm going I'm to confirm to you this thing about the righteous. 
I'm going to show you who you are for real now because y'all don't believe it about this born again thing. It says, it says in 1 John 3, look at me, look at me. It said, but he who commits sin, who practices evil doing is of the devil, takes the, his character from the evil one. For the devil has sinned, violated for divine law. He sinned and violated the divine law. Watch this. From the beginning. Now listen. The reason the Son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo, destroy, and loosen, and dissolve the works of the devil has done. Y'all didn't get that. The reason why Jesus Christ was made manifest is to undo, loosen, and destroy the works that the devil have left. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. You didn't hear what I just said because you didn't get it. You didn't get it. They didn't get it, Paul. I'm talking about the people that says, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me. How you know he lives? I know he lives. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say to you? If you know that he lives in you and you've been born again and you are the righteous, then the thing that lives in you is made manifest. The reason why you break out and praise God. The reason why there is an outward manifestation of the glory of God that is in you. The reason why you can't put your hands down. The reason why you can't sit down. The reason why you end up breaking out crying even though things are going like upside down. The reason why you can't stop coming to church because the Christ keeps manifesting himself. And the reason why he keeps showing up on you even though you ain't got a right even though you ain't got no reason even though everything going wrong you ought to be somewhere holding your head down the reason why you continue to praise God the reason why the anointing keeps showing up on you because he has to keep on manifesting himself because he has a job to do and his job is to dissolve and destroy and loosen everything that the devil has done can I give you some wisdom can I give somebody some wisdom right now? How many people feel the anointing on you right now? How many people feel? No, 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 I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. How, how many people here really feel the power of God on you right now? Okay, the reason why that power is on you right now, because Jesus has been called to the forefront to loose and destroy and break down some stuff that the devil has done. Y'all didn't see me. No, no, no. See, that praise you got, that ain't for you. Ah, that hallelujah that you're screaming about, that even ain't for you. It ain't, listen, it's not about you to feel good. The reason why you can't stop saying glory. The reason why you can't sit down. The reason why you feel the power is because he's destroying something. He's losing something. He's getting rid of something that the devil thought you wouldn't go never be free from. He's in the building. He's being made manifest that he may destroy the world. people before you sit down and say something is being destroyed. Y'all didn't say. Tell them say, say the Bible said tonight that the spirit of the Lord is undoing something that the devil has done. He's loosing something that the devil had tied up. Y'all better, gonna make me go off the, y'all gonna make me jump off this platform. I said tell somebody that I feel it in the spirit You need to tell somebody. You need to tell somebody what the Lord is doing in me right now. He's not doing it to me. He's doing it for me. He's doing something for the Lord. Come on, let me be assured.
sit down for a second, cause, 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 cause I got to read this before we get way out there. Okay, I'm finna, now, now, now when I read this next, oh, shit. You gonna know that the Holy Ghost let me find this. You gonna know that this is a scripture that the devil had hidden to us. It says, no one, the ninth verse, First John 3, 3 and 9. No one born begotten of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. No one that's born of God habitually and knowingly practices sin. But let me watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, kids. Y'all get me, y'all get me to be blessed. For God's nature abides in him, his principle of life, the divine sperm. Now, y'all, that, that, that right there. You didn't, you didn't get that. You did not get that. You did not get that. That the reason why you were born again because God used divine sperm. Y'all didn't get that. I'm going to break that thing down to you. I got some nieces and nephews. And my brother married a Spanish girl. And so my nieces and nephews, it's six of them. And they used to come home all the time. And they said, the kids tease us. And they call us yellow vanilla. And they call us mixed kids. And they call us mulatto kids. And my oldest niece one day was crying and she said, Auntie, I said, she said, I don't know what we are. She said, they said we mixed. And the black kids don't want to be with us because they said we white. And the white kids don't want to be with us because they said we black. We don't know what we is. And so I went and I had one of my secretaries to dig up the word mulatto to find out what were they. And you know what? They have declared according to the scientific law that the sperm rules. And I don't care if my niece came out starch white with blonde eyes and blue eyes and blonde hair. You are what your father is. And if your daddy is black, you black. I don't care how white you look. If your daddy is Chinese, you can look like you from Africa. You are considered Chinese. You don't hear what I'm saying. And because God talks about the divine sperm, because God is holy, I may not look like it yet, but I am holy. You don't hear what I'm telling you. Because my father is rich, I may not have no money in my bank account, but I'm a rich woman because my daddy is rich. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If the cattle on a thousand hills belong to my father, what my father is. My father is sanctified. Therefore, I'm sanctified. My father is righteous. Therefore, I'm righteous. Now, I know, I know we ain't in the convocation, but somebody ought to yell, burst out and go and shout for real. Let me help you with something, I quit. Let me help you with something. See, y'all didn't know what was going on. You didn't have a clue of what God was talking about. And everybody was talking about, oh, Mary, it's Christmas time, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and, and Jesus was born by divine conception, and we just worship Jesus. You don't get it. You really don't get it. You really didn't get that principle. What he was trying to tell all of us, what our dumb selves, is that I want y'all to get used to the principle I'm using Jesus to break in a divine law of divine conception. Because in order for you to be birthed out, to become all of what I say you're going to become, you got to be done to by divine conception. And he said, and they didn't believe Mary and somebody ain't gonna believe you. They didn't believe he was the son of the living God. They, 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 they didn't believe he had all power in his hand. They didn't believe it. That's why they persecuted him and talked about him. So if you're being persecuted and talk about it, baby, you on schedule. Because you're on your way to divine power. No, y'all, 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 come on. Come on, you got to walk the same rock because it's a divine conception. It's divine sperm. Come on here, son. I wish I had somebody say something. That means, that means, that means if you're being lied on and talked about it and prosecuted, you on schedule. That means the devil has already recognized what's in you and he's trying to stop it. And that's what the Bible said. If the devil had known who Jesus was, he would have gotten rid of him. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. But it's too late. Y'all don't hear me. 
here because you got a praise in your mouth, it's too late. If you can shout tonight, it's too late. If you can still give God a praise, it's too late. And what the devil thought he was going to do to bring you down, it ain't going to work, it ain't going to work, it ain't going to work. It's too late. Come on, here, somebody. Come on, here, somebody. You got to make up in your mind like Jesus on the cross. It hurts. But the song said, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Lord, plant my feet on high ground. Listen. Y'all better get this tape. Cause, 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 cause right here he says, he says, he says, he says, he says, for God's nature abides in him. In him is the small him, you. His, capital H, Christ. His, his, watch this, his principle of life, the divine sperm, remains permanently within him, you. That's why the scripture says, well, the Lord is married to the backsliding, not the backslider. Because he has a commitment to the divine sperm that it permanently remains in you. Come on, you, 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 you. you. Okay. Let me help you with that. Let me help you with that. Let me help you. Let me help you with that divine sperm. Let me help you with that divine sperm. Let me help you with that. Um, when, when, um, I was going through the process. Bishop and I were trying to have a child. And the man started talking about the sperm. And he started saying that the reason why you are what your father is, because the egg is just the egg, but the sperm carries. Y'all ain't hearing this. Yes. The sperm carries the sex of the child. Y'all don't, y'all playing. The sperm determines what it's going to be. And in that little micrometer of a skidometer that they showed us on the Test screen. The doctor said something so powerful. He said, it's so, because they had to explain every little bit of part of us. Every little bit of part. They said, in that little microcentimeter, if it's going to be a boy, in it already, at this little bitty microcentimeter, is a 6'2 man with brown eyes, size 11 and a half shoe, a 46 long suit. Because in the micrometer of the sperm, all of the factors of what it shall be is already in the sperm. And that's why if the sperm remains in the Christian permanently, you don't have to worry about becoming. May not have no money right now, but go have some because it's in the sperm. 
may not have a job right now, but go get one because it's in the spirit. Oh, my ministry may be going through right now, but it's going to be all right because it's in the spirit. It's already mature. You don't hear what I'm saying. I don't hear nobody talking to me right there. I don't hear nobody talking to me right there. Yeah, the devil may be speaking up and he may be trying to whip my head, but guess what? It's already in the spur. And that's why all I gotta do is bless the Lord because it's already finished. Now I know why. When Jesus hung his head on the cross and said, it is finished. And the blood ran from him. Do you know what happened? The divine sperm was transformed into the hearts of men, which means now the devil can't stop what God is about to do. It's already in you. Can I just get seven people to just start shouting? It's in me. It's in me. Can I get seven people to just start shouting? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Can I, can I get seven people to shout, I was born with it, I was born with it, I was born with it. Can I get seven people to shout, it's in my sperm, it's in my sperm, it's in the sperm, it's in the sperm. See, now I know what the Bible says. Get your divine sperm. Because if you get the divine sperm and it stays in you permanently, you cannot. It ain't no way you pray for me that I may not. No, you can't. Okay, so yeah. Oh, gee. Oh. Oh. I mind if I find something right quick. Show you something. Can I find something? Y'all let me find it. Okay. Uh, ooh. Y'all, we don't mind waiting like that. Y'all, just, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Oh, I ain't forgot that, boo. Thank you. Matter of fact, matter of fact, that, 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 that may be. Second Timothy what? 316. Okay. Uh, okay, let me go to something else. I, 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 gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta find this other thing. I gotta, I gotta find this little scripture. I gotta find it because I, 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 I Need to, need to, you need to hear this. Okay. It's on one of my little pieces of paper. Okay, just hold on. Got to get this to you because, um. Woo! 
Because I have to find this because you have to, you have to know, you have to know how the enemy comes to deceive and you have to know <clears throat> who you are and what God is doing. Okay. Huh? Go to First Corinthians nine for this portion of it. First Corinthians nine. First Corinthians nine. We're gonna come back to that. Second Timothy. Oof. He's straight whooping us up, ain't he? Yeah. He's straight whooping us up. Anybody here go to hell after that? Is you gonna be like, you gonna be like Bishop's bike experience? You just you're gonna be like somebody just rolled up a piece of paper with some gasoline and stuck a torch in the back of your pipe. <laughs> Second Timothy. What did I send you, 1 Corinthians? Okay, 1 Corinthians 9. I'm, I'm, I was still looking for my thing, but I'm going I'm to I'm come on over here with y'all, 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Do not, you do not know that in a race, all runners compete, but only one receive the prize, so run your race, that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. Now every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win a wreath that will soon wither. But we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness and cannot wither. Therefore, I do run uncertainly. Therefore, I do not run uncertainly without definite aim. You crazy to take off running the race and don't even know where the finish line is. You just running out there. Now where you going? I'm just running for Jesus. Where you running? I don't know, but I'm just running. I, where's the finish line? I don't know where it is. And you got to ask everybody, where are we going? We just running. Without a definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an adversary. Without an adversary. I've ever seen people always in spiritual warfare and ain't, ain't nothing fighting against them. Okay, y'all. I'm not getting nobody to help me here. Did I just say something? It says, but like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships, and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. You can't bring it in. You can't discipline it. You the counterfeit. Now you you can't you can't receive the the discipline of the word and the beatings of the gospel. Then you're not a son. Okay, now let me go to my Timothy scripture so we can be so we can so we can be through for this time. I don't know if y'all gonna want me to teach again for a little while here. Yeah. I just don't want to just keep on killing you. Killing you. What's the scripture? 2 Timothy what? Mm -hmm. 
2 Timothy 3, 16. Okay. It says, every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instructions, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will in thought, purpose, and action. I have to, I have to walk in the training of the gospel. Because watch this, the power that is within me getting things. The power that is within me. God requires that I discipline myself so that my flesh doesn't move me out of my place of power. So you got to handle it roughly. You got to tell him when to shut up. You got to discipline him. You got to do just like you do your kids. Put it on punishment. All right? So you want to talk a lot of time where you ain't eating for two days. <laughs> all right, so you want to carry on like that? Oh, you want to complain because worship was too long? Okay, well, we're going to praise all night now. Because <laughs> the only reason why you're acting like this is because you the flesh. And you already an enemy against God. And now I got to walk around with the enemy power God in me and the enemy on me. Y'all ain't hearing me. So you got to talk to your spirit and say, you the enemy. Talk to your flesh. You, you the enemy. You don't want to go to church because you the enemy. And when you get there, you don't want to praise God because you the enemy. You don't want to walk out of this room right now where they gossiping because you the enemy. And bring yourself on out of this room. And if you sit in here and listen, you just well as good as done said something. Bring yourself on in here. No, you going to prayer. Oh, you don't want to go to prayer? You too sleepy? Okay, that's just why we're going. Because if you're trying to put me to sleep, then there's something already in the spirit realm that you know that God want to release to me. So now I'm taking you to prayer with your sleepy self. Y'all don't know how to do it. I ain't hear nobody talk back to me because y'all don't know how to do it. You, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you don't, watch this, if you don't, if you don't, then you are proven to be a counterfeit. I'm going to say it one more time. If you don't, you are proven to be the counterfeit. Because before Jesus can walk in all power, he had to buffet his own body. He had to pray until sweat ran from his pores as of light drops of blood. The devil said, go and call 10,000 names. You can call him. He said, shut up. You're going to take this pain. You ain't going nowhere. Well, ain't you mad because everybody went to sleep and you don't want to pray by yourself? Shut up. I've been called to pray. Look at all the stuff you're going through. Now where is your God? Don't you feel bad, Jesus? Father, this thing hurt, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. Father, be your will. Take this bitter cup from me. If it ain't, let me shut up and drink it. Yeah. Well, you the Christ. You can call 10,000 angels, and they, they won't let your heel dash against a stone. That's all right. I ain't got to call no angels. Because I've been called to this battle. And the book of Ezekiel says he's given me power in the warfare against the evil of the day. Yes. Making me ready for the battle. Yes. Y'all ain't hearing this. Yes. I'm buffeting myself, Asia. I'm, 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 I'm disciplined. Discipline. You discipline yourself. When the flesh is going through. You just come to church. Because sometimes you got to, you don't hear me. Sometimes you got to, and I see, I, see, I see some of y'all doing it sometimes. You be like, the devil say, you ain't got shit. Why are you going to pray? Well, just as long as you made it in the house of the Lord, that's good enough. 
why you gotta sometimes thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And all of a sudden they look in your room, you go, thank you. Somebody said, well, honey, she ain't got a praise like the honey. You don't know. You don't, I, you, you, you just don't. Yeah. Honey, I'm kicking some flesh butt right now because. Because right now, you know, you, I got so many things going on in my life right now, I shouldn't even have a praise. But right now, I'm trying to bring the flesh under discipline, and it don't want to praise God. That's why my praise sound like I'm fighting. That's why every Sunday, you ain't got no, hey, girl. You just got the holy hop. Ooh, hallelujah, he's sweet. And then some days, you got to go, oh, God. Oh, help me, God. I mean, you looking like somebody that totally lost their mind. Screaming and hollering and clothes hanging off you. Come on, somebody. Because when you see somebody praising God like that, they in a battle against the flesh. That's why Paul said, when I want to do good, evil was always present. He said, there's a war going on in me. It's my flesh warring against my spirit. My spirit say you got the victory. But your flesh say you will never make it. But your spirit person that he does that for is the righteous. <laughs> Tell your neighbor again, say neighbor, the only person that he does all that for is the righteous. Say he brings the righteous out of trouble with righteousness. In righteousness, he judges the unjust. Tell him, in righteousness, no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Said, through righteousness, I am overcome. Said, through righteousness, I prosper. Said, through righteousness, I maintain. 
Through righteousness, I'm more than a conqueror. Tell them that's why the Bible told me to seek you first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. That means help from Zion. That means a breakthrough. That means deliverance for your family, for your finances. That means healing for your body. That means power for your anointing. That means a brand new ministry. That means hope for tomorrow. That means faith in a dead situation. All of these things will be added if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be, I'll be giving Bishop my next. I'm not finished with this. I'm not finished with this yet. I still got some next stuff. I still got some stuff that I didn't get to. I, you know, I don't know why God is on this. <laughs> One scripture said he brings the he brings the soul of the righteous out of the snare of the enemy. The righteous. <sighs> if a divine sperm remains in me permanently, I cannot. We, 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 we just need to stop fretting and just start and, and start. The Bible says that the righteous shall judge the world. He said, you shall judge the world in righteousness. Another scripture said, and the righteous are those that have the discernment what is morally good and what is morally wrong. And you don't know how to judge between good and bad. You're missing the spirit of righteousness. Oh, it does a lot of stuff. It does a lot of stuff. You can't properly judge nobody if you ain't You can't judge a situation if you ain't righteous. You can't properly judge it. Why? Why can't you properly judge it? Because the first thing that becomes the forerunner of righteousness is the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth it's all truth. He said, the Spirit of the Lord will lead you and guide you into all truth. All that is true. And so you can't even sit and counsel nobody properly if you're not the righteous. Because you don't possess the spirit of truth. Which means you don't really know who is wrong and who right. Because I've had people I've I counseled before and, I, and they were just sitting there Deacon Mim telling me the whole story. And the Holy Ghost just let me look right through. When they get through, I'm saying, all that you just said was a lie. Now let me tell you how that went. It went like this, this, that, 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 and that, and that. They break down and start crying. Well, how did you know? Because the spirit of truth would lead me and guide me into all that is true. And when a lie surface, the spirit of truth rejects it in my spirit. I don't care how good it sounds. People say, I love you. My spirit said, mm-mm. So they're saying they love you with their mouth, but ain't no virtue in that. They're missing 2 Peter, the first chapter. They got faith to believe that God is going to use me in their life. But the virtue, the motive is not pure right. so the Holy Ghost said ignore them right. till they exercise the faith of virtue yeah. y'all ain't saying that y'all ain't saying that spirit of truth is something it's something it's something and that's why the Bible said if it's possible even the very elect will be fooled because there is a wisdom of the world. There is a wisdom of the satanic kingdom 
And the only way that you will be able to decipher what is truth, because the wisdom of Satan in this hour come as an angel of light. Remember when I told you that the other night? Remember when I said that? How beware, Luke 11, 33, that the light that is in you is not darkness. So the light that will come from Satan will come as an angel of light appearing to be light. Because his, listen, his assignment, listen to this. The assignment of Satan in this last hour is to refine and perfect his appearance so that his appearance can be perfected to look like he is the spirit of truth. Do you, okay, let me, do y'all think the devil gonna walk in here with red horns and, 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 and fire shooting out of his eyes and hissing with long teeth? No. He gonna walk in here like an angel of light. He gonna walk around the kingdom like he's sold out to God. I was on the phone with somebody and I was ministering to them the other night. And I hadn't heard from them in a while and, and, and didn't know what was really going on with them. And they said to me, they said, you know, I didn't, I didn't know where else to turn. And they was talking about this person that, that preaches, and I know them. And I mean, when I tell you that the fire comes down when they preach. And she said to me, she said, I don't understand how me and this person can, 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 we were in the bed together all day as lovers. And that night, the power of God would fall so, and people would run to the altar getting saved. She said, I'm confused. She said, all I know is that I had to get away from that situation. She said, but I can't find God because I'm confused because I ain't never... She said, because I don't, I don't know what, what save is because, I, because, because God really uses her so powerful. She said, I saw people throw cigarettes on the altar. I saw people, lives changed. And I'm saying to myself, I was just in the bed with this person three hours ago. And God had me for two and a half hours to walk her through that Bible with the message of righteousness. And that's when the Lord really began to talk to my spirit. He said, don't you see, Juanita? He said, the job of the enemy is now in the last day. Do you know the devil in the last day is trying everything he can not to look like the devil? Okay. He, he, he in a panic not to look like the devil. He ain't trying to look like the devil. And that's what the Bible said. If it was possible, the very elect would be fooled. But what will keep us from being deceived is the spirit of righteousness. That's the dividing line between the wheat and the tear and the fake. Because you know what? You can't fake righteousness. Because if you try to fake it, a situation will happen to catch you out there and you would be exposed not to be righteous. You don't hear what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. You just live that thing out long enough because real righteousness will prevail in any situation. So the devil now, he's trying to look saved. He looking like preachers and evangelists and prophets and teachers. And he's speaking in tongues and got an own word and can prophesy our own word and can preach you down in between the seats and ain't living nothing behind closed doors. And that's why I believe the Lord has given me this word. Doing my book on prayer, my next book is called None But the Righteous. Because everything, they used to say, Deacon Mims, that everything is so gray. It ain't great now. Everything is just looking like the light. 
And I told y'all, when I first saw clippings of the movie, a poltergeist, the light was so bright you couldn't hardly look at the TV. And she was saying, come to the light, Caroline. And the light was made to appear to be a wonderful experience, but a demonic force was behind the light. You don't hear me. You're not born of him until you can possess and maintain the divine sperm. Because in that, the scripture says, you cannot habitually, you cannot. It is not possible. And I said, I don't care what happens and who says what. I'm giving you what the word says. Make a mistake, get blindsided by the devil because you miss one of the qualities. Remember the qualities? The qualities that will keep you and you shall never fall. Make a mistake, get blindsided by the devil because you miss a quality, because you get idle. Yeah, live in sin habitually. You're not born again. That's why gifts and callings are without repentance. She just began to weep on the phone. And I mean, I preached just like I'm preaching now. Till I was sweating to the virtue one out of me. Till I mean, I was. And then the Lord began to have me to prophesy to her. And I started prophesying some things about where I saw God wanted to take her. And lo and behold, when I got through, she said, I'm, I'm already in these places. I'm, God's got me sitting in the middle of stars. And they, and, and they asking me, do you know about, like explain like, like the Christ thing to me. And she said, and in my heart, I love God. And in my heart, she said, the Lord, he just calls me to walk out of it. She said, but the enemy had me so mentally ensnared until I didn't know how to believe him. I didn't know how to believe the scripture. I didn't know what was what. And she said, you saved my life tonight because now I know. And I said this to her and I'm saying to the body of Christ tonight. He doesn't want you to believe in your walk in him because you feel it. He wants you to embrace this walk because you have the facts and the principles and you're not missing any ingredients. And you can feel like a low down dog when you walk in there. You can feel like you just depressed underneath the bench. But if you know that you possess the qualities and you know that you're seeking first the kingdom of God, then know. That what I'm going through now is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in me. That this is momentary. It's a, that's, 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 that's what I have to, you know, sometimes you have to talk to yourself. So this is a passing thing. This too will pass. And then you get to a point, and I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going I'm I'm to I'm go. Every time God wants to take you to another level in your righteousness, you must be. And this is what he was saying to me when I was up here singing a few minutes ago when I first got up and I started singing when my heart is overwhelmed. And I just broke down and started crying. He said, you must be um, in the Old Testament. They called it passing through. When they, when they, would, when they would take their children and pass them through the fire. And he said, every time God get ready to, to, to purify you to another level, you must be passed through the fire. And many times we freak out in the fire. When we pass them through the fire for purification. Passing through the fire for the next level of righteousness. You're being passed through the fire so you can be made a holy thing. Okay, that's powerful right there. The things of the tabernacle that was going to be in the most holy place that was made of gold had to be passed through the fire before Deacon Mims it can be declared to be holy. I don't think y'all just heard what I said. It had to be passed through the fire before it can be declared as holy. And every time you get shaky in your righteousness and don't know where you, you know, the Lord will always let you be confronted. 
with that which is temptation so that he can provoke you to righteousness. Because you keep asking him to move it out the way. And he said, then you will never know what's within you. You'll never know what's within you if I move it. I got to keep it there so I can keep showing you that you're the righteous. Because every time you say no to the devil, your spirit man is declaring you're the righteous. You're the righteous. Because in order for you to know that right has been birthed in you, that you've been born again, you got to be confronted with wrong. You got to be confronted with wrong so right can stand up in you. That's what the scripture means. It says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord stand up. I see a lot of people think that, honey, when the enemy come out, look, and the spirit of the Lord going to come in like a tidal wave and he just going to whoosh, stand up against the devil. Mm -mm. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, which is his righteousness, stand against him. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody touched three people and said, none but the righteous. I'm on this thing. I'm on this thing right now, and I'm going to, I'm going to obey the Lord. Um, he told me to ask for a righteous seed. We're moving in something, and I don't even know why God keeps letting me 